standing on the surface of the moon on this July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man. Where do you go once you've walked on the moon? It's no ordinary question, but one from which even us earthlings could all learn, especially if retirement's beckoning. Canadian Chris Hadfield retired last year as an astronaut. He says the original moonwalkers had it the hardest. Most of the astronauts have had a really tough time afterwards were some of the earlier astronauts, and they didn't have uh, the pathfinders in front of them. They, they were really forging out in a new area. And also, they were extremely focused on uh, the job at hand, and it was a race to the moon, of course, and so there was a deadline and a very clear definition of winning and losing and what success was. And so when that success happened, when uh, they were uh, capable of, of, of getting to the moon and walking on the moon and coming back, suddenly it was almost uh, like like falling off a cliff afterwards for some of them. I think they just had gotten so addicted and used to the pace and the complexity and the, uh, the holy grail-like nature of what they were doing that they hadn't anticipated what life was going to be like afterwards. And, and that's coupled with the experience itself, which is deeply psychological to be far enough from the world to be able to cover it up with your thumb, uh, to look at the world in that sort of fragile perspective and to be one of the very first to do that. Chris Hadfield spent a good chunk of his career as a fighter and test pilot. The pull of speed and open sky drives pilots like these here in Sweden testing Saab's latest fighter jet. Astronauts often start here at the controls of a fighter jet, aiming for the clouds. But those with stratospheric ambitions have many competitors, with few ever making it to space. And whether they get to space or not, fighter pilots also have to adjust to life after the incredible focus and split-second challenges of their work. I must plan for uh, quitting fl flying fighters because that's not something you can you want to do the whole career. But I think um, it's important to replace the flying with some other challenge. And that challenge could be anything from garden work to cycling. I think that might be difficult to find something so challenging and something that requires you so focus so much. Like for Chris Hadfield, the love of space starts young. At London Science Museum, the replica of the moon landing craft Eagle is very popular. Writer Andrew Smith spoke to many of the moonwalkers for his book Moon Dust and found their lives after space widely diverged. The different experiences that the moonwalkers had when they came back seemed to me, and I didn't realize this immediately, I really found this several years after I'd finished the book, was how they contextualized their experience. Some of them saw it as part of a, a larger story of which they were a part and they integrated it into their lives. And the ones who'd seen it as a goal in itself, as this fixed thing, tended to come back and be rather disappointed and have trouble. If you, if you take the experiences of, say, two astronauts like Buzz Aldrin, who was on the first mission, and Alan Bean, who was on the second, Buzz came back and he was very, very focused on that goal of getting to the moon and getting there first. And he came back and really struggled, couldn't really settle, nothing seemed quite right. He was selling used cars within a couple of years. Whereas Alan Bean, who was on the second mission, had always been quite a creative character anyway, and he'd always had a, a yen to be a painter. So he, on the way back from the moon, decided that he was going to follow that dream of his. And he came back and he became a painter. And he paints scenes from the lunar landings endlessly and does very well. He's very successful. Most contented man I've ever met, I think. Today's astronauts seem to be better prepared for life after space, avoiding the descent into alcoholism and clinical depression that plagued Buzz Aldrin and others. Chris Hadfield was captain of the International Space Station before retiring. He shot to fame with his gravity-free version of David Bowie's Space Oddity. Being an astronaut, like a lot of professions, is all-consuming. It's not a job. You don't just be an astronaut and, and do other stuff. It's really hard to strike that balance. Uh, Neil Armstrong, one of the most accomplished human beings ever, he was only an astronaut for eight years total, where, where you know I was in the astronaut 21 years. So it gave me an advantage of time to look ahead and realize this, this is not my entire life. 
And uh, I'm married to a very strong woman as well. And, and she and I have always thought about long-term plans. And so I think I really started thinking about life after an astronaut <laughs> the day I got selected as an astronaut. Where, how is this going to fit into the overall picture? Let's do this part right. Let's really focus on it. But let's recognize that this isn't the, my complete life. This isn't the only thing that's going to happen in our lives. To him, retirement isn't the end. He now lectures in aviation, has written his memoirs, and has many speaking engagements. It's funny now, everybody asking me, so now that you've retired, boy, what are you doing with all your time? And I sort of look back, I used to be a downhill ski instructor, and I was a, a fighter pilot and a test pilot. I think I've retired five times. And so I, I remind people that after I retired from the Air Force, then I commanded a spaceship. So retirement and the end of something does not mean that everything is over. There's always new stuff to do and new opportunities. And that is the real delight and, and richness of life, I think, if you can really focus on doing well at what you're doing now, but then readdress it when that particular phase is over and look forward to doing the next challenging thing. I think uh, that makes life uh, as worth living as possible. There should be nothing stopping you from shooting for the moon. But be prepared, find support, figure out a way to contextualize it within your life. Ask yourself, are you a Chris Hadfield or are you a Buzz Aldrin? Because that'll make all the difference when you come back down to earth. Carol Ahoyos, Financial Times, London Science Museum.